Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. So, um, as you guys can see, I am still in my hotel room. This is actually the last day of Anime Expo, but I figured now that the Expo is finally over that I do a quick preliminary review on how I think the Expo went. Now, some quick context uh, for, those who, for those of you who haven't watched my uh, Anime Expo survival guide, I have uh, been to An Anime Expo since 2013, 2014, so I've been doing this for a while now. And last year and a couple months ago, I actually started doing my Anime Expo survival guide. So um, essentially, I take the knowledge that I learned from surviving these expos multiple times and basically uh, putting it out on the internet for you guys to use for your next convention or maybe uh, another convention that isn't anime related at all. So as the title says, I am going to be reviewing 2022's Anime Expo and I am going to be comparing it to 2019. And some spoilers for you guys, <laughs> uh, 2022 was a definite improvement over 2019. Uh, I'll go into it a little more later in the video, but what I can say right now is that they definitely improved a lot of things and made things a lot better. A um, couple of things they need to work on, but overall a marked improvement on the expo as a whole. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it. So let's go ahead and start with the pros first before I go into the cons of the con. Um, the first things that I want to mention right off the bat is that Anime Expo 2022 has definitely had faster lines. 2019 was kind of awful in terms of being the first time for anyone going to this expo. It was the first time that they were rolling out new technology for essentially uh, attendee, um, I guess, statistics and also for making sure the right people get in. Um, unfortunately, 2019, the, a lot of stuff did not go right. So the technology broke, lines stayed long, and there was only limited access control to get into the convention itself. Well, they learned from 2019 quite seriously and actually changed up a lot of stuff so that it's a lot more streamlined. For one, 2019 only had one entrance on day one. Well, they did away with that. So with 2022, they had three entrances open at all times, which definitely improved the uh, amount of people coming in. And they also implemented newer RFID technology, which was a lot easier. And they also implemented more advanced security that did not need a bag check. So you can walk through and unless the machine marked you, you did not need to do a bag check if you had a backpack on you. For me, they saw that I had a, self a selfie stick and they just let me through. The second thing is definitely a, a pretty good improvement on merch. So th this year they have definitely got a lot of vendors this time around. The of course, of course, they had the usual big names. They had Gundam there, they had the Bandai Namco, they had Yostar, Crunchyroll, and Good Smile Company. And they were all giving away convention exclusive merch, which was always nice. Unfortunately, I am not that patient of a person, so I wasn't willing to wait in those lines. But I think for those of you who managed to get into those uh, vendors, I think you guys hopefully got some good stuff. And uh, I can't wait to hear in the comments what you guys got. Aside from that, a lot of smaller vendors coming into town, of course, because I'm a weeb softer, I love my anime patches. So as a result, uh, we saw two patch makers come in. We saw Weapons Grade Waifus, which is one of my favorites, along with Bacon Patchworks. And they were doing some awesome stuff. I love every time they come in and put in the effort to sell their stuff here. Unfortunately, due to like certain things, they couldn't sell their loot patches, so... I have to get that from the internet. <laughs> On top of that, Artist Alley, definitely, as always, there's a bunch of artists coming in and uh, selling their wares. I have a couple of friends that wanted to do the same thing, but unfortunately, the <laughs> Artist Alley sold out in terms of their um, spacing that they can uh, lease. So definitely a very successful Anime Expo. And the one thing I do want to mention is that it felt, despite being sold out of their four-day pass and all their day passes, it felt like a 2016 experience. Now, what I mean by that is 2016 is when it started to ramp up in attendance and how it felt very busy. Well, this year it didn't feel that way. It felt like it, as if it was a lot smaller. 
Now this could be either due to the pandemic or, um, but I like to imagine that this was due to better crowd control. So overall, the faster lines, great merch. The one little hiccup was the artist alley in which the they could have made it a little wider, but aside from that, they did pretty well. Aside from merch and lines, they had a wonderful panel lineup. Uh, the star of the show, of course, being Trash Taste, the YouTubers that talk about anime. Um, definitely one of the things I wanted to go to, unfortunately, um, for a reason that I'm going to mention in the cons part, I couldn't get in, so that was a shame. But I heard it was a lot of fun, and I heard that so, uh, someone did a D's Nuts joke to one of them, and um, is now very famous on the internet for it. So um, I actually met the guy. Hats off to you for doing that. So uh, hopefully I'll see you next year. Aside from that, they had plenty of cosplay guides, especially for hard armor. So that was pretty cool. Um, very basic information on that sort of armor stuff, but it's always good for people to brush up on the basics. They also had a wonderful anime lineup this year. And I was able to go to two out of three that I wanted to go to. The first one was Call of the Night, which is a vampire anime. And all I can say in three words is smug vampire waifu. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to that one as soon as it comes out. Um, no spoilers. All I can say is that it's pretty good. The second one is Dr. Stone's season three premiere, which I wanted to watch. But unfortunately, I didn't uh, make it in time. So... I heard it was good, and I'll be the judge of that when it comes out. And the final one that I saw was not exactly the best, uh, but it's a good filler, I guess, is the uh, is my easy high life, which um, it, it was all right. Um, all I can say is that they basically spent all their animation budget on voice actors, so. Um, aside from that, great panel lineup, um, definitely a lot to do for its first time. I heard that Steve Aoki was here doing a concert, so that was really cool. And um, yeah, overall, I think those are some pretty good pros. Um, they also had a wonderful service. They had their shuttles, as always. They also had their first aid, cosplay, uh, repair, uh, and their entertainment hall on tap. So overall, definitely a lot of good stuff going this year. So now that we have done talking about the pros, let's go ahead and get into the cons. And there's a couple of stuff, but it's mostly, I guess, nitpicks, nothing too critical. And the first one is the inconsistent shuttle service. So yes, while Anime Expo has a shuttle service, um, it runs every like 30, to an, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, however, I did notice that some routes are getting more attention, or it feels like they're getting more attention than other routes. Uh, this year, I was staying on Route 3, which is the Kawada to the Double Tree, and I realized that it, this one took a little longer, and I think the reason why is because of its location. So if we go back to 2022's uh, bus service route, you could see that there it only had three hotels on the list. However, one of them is located right next to Little Tokyo. So what I'm assuming is happening is that people are realizing that you can basically hop on any of these shuttles to go wherever, like meet up with friends at their hotel. So what they're doing is that they're hopping on to Route 3 to go to Little Tokyo to essentially get a, uh, grab a bite to eat, which is honestly a pretty smart idea. And also not really Anime Expo's fault. It's more of the kind of people getting <laughs> getting smart to the idea that they can use the shuttle service besides going to and from their hotel. It was definitely something that I did as well. So I went, I used it to go to the uh, double tree, the double tree in downtown LA, then walk all the way to Little Tokyo and get a bite to eat. It was definitely a smarter tactic for a lot of people to use. And I'm going to be putting that in my addendum um, in my part three of my survival guide. This one's a little more serious. Um, the this is uh, what I'm calling false lines. So um, this is has this hasn't really happened on most of the rooms except for the main uh, the main events room. Um, what happened? What tends to happen is um, something called a false line, 
where essentially this line you think is going to this certain panel or event. Turns out it's not actually a line for it. It's just a line that leads to nowhere. Um, it's in basically a psychological trap that tends to happen at expos these size where you want to get into a certain panel, but you don't, uh, you don't really do a, like a surface level examination of where the actual line is. Um, so as a result, I, when I wanted to go to the trash taste um, panel, I ended up in one of these false lines that was behind the premier line. And turns out the general attendance line is actually outside around the corner. So as a result, um, right when the panel started, we weren't allowed entry because, well, that's the premier line. And so as a result, I missed it. The, this can be solved by just volunteers basically patrolling around the area. Um, overall, this one I'm a little mixed on because I want to say the volunteers should have been walking around a little more, but they're volunteers, so I can't really penalize them that hard on it. So overall, the false line thing would def they need to find a better way of, um, I guess, finding these false lines in the first place and then kind of... Um, like getting people to move to the actual lines before uh, like stuff happens essentially. The last one is a bit of a pet peeve of mine and this is um this has been going on for forever. This is just basically that the convention has a lack of seating. Um, <laughs> uh, essentially you know you spent most of the better part of the day going shopping or looking at panels hanging out with friends, and now you guys want to grab food and take a seat somewhere and eat. Um, Anime Expo kind of has this chronic issue of uh, under capacity for seating, so, or like just recreational seating, so uh, what tends to happen is you'll see some halls become, <laughs> become little seated communities. So, especially around um, the exhibit hall, people will start to line up against the wall or, or sit, sit along the walls. Uh, and essentially it, it causes a bit, a bit of a traffic buildup because you're trying to avoid stepping on these people. Um, what, I could, what I'd recommend is that basically have a couple of cordon off areas for sitting. They have a lounge, uh, but you need a pass for that. So I'd, I'd say that next year, hopefully Anime Expo definitely uh, think about putting in more seating areas for people to just sit down and rest and make them marked uh, because aside from that um, it is kind of difficult trying to avoid stepping on people so that's just something to be aware of so yeah if i was to give any final re so if i was to give any recommendations um to anime expo all i can say is more shuttle service uh, essentially especially for any route going to little tokyo probably add an extra shuttle onto it it would definitely help cut down on the uh, transit or on the wait times because uh, the wait times were definitely long on route 3 the most and I can see this happening for any route really that is uh, going to Little Tokyo because of course everyone here is a weeb so we're going to Little Tokyo to eat so um, definitely something that uh, hopefully that committee will be aware of some other things are more designated seating areas uh, basically, just try and bring in more benches, more chairs for people to sit at, or um, yeah, just basically um, rest instead of sitting instead of sitting on the hard floor. Because I can imagine, like if you can imagine these, I know these four day pass and day pass peasants, they need a they need a place to sit as well. Besides the premier pass people, and finally, this one is more of a like my opinion is definitely definitely more. Um, access control patrols essentially uh, it'd be nice if people were walking around and making sure that there are no false lines because um, it really is disappointing when you wait for so long and then end up being told that you're not in the right line and that you have to go all the way to the back so definitely something to be aware of um, for the people that went to or that are basically running this um, if they ever find this video but overall for everyone else who's watching my review i hope you guys found that maybe a lot of the stuff you have in mind is around the same um i definitely had a fun time and compared to 2019 this is definitely a step up and improvement 
especially the faster lines, better streamlined tech uh, integration. So the RFID chip, it definitely worked a lot better and definitely uh, uh, it felt a lot less congested than our typical Anime Expo. But like I said, that could be because it's the first time in two years and some people are still not really comfortable coming back during the waning years of the pandemic. Overall, I, I give Anime Expo 2022 a solid 8 out of 10. It's definitely one of the better conventions I've been to in the past few years and definitely one of the best anime expos I've been to in a really long time. And um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed this a lot. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully you found this useful. You found that my opinions are either the same, different. If it's different, please leave a comment in the comment section down below so we can basically talk about this. And uh, yeah, I'm going to basically close off this video with all the footage that I got from Anime Expo 2022. And um, without the way, take care and I'll see you at the next Anime Expo. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, everyone's so shy. They're all introverts.